What's up guys, I'm Lee Morris with fstoppers.com and today we've got some interesting tech to review. This is the Loop Deck CT. Now this unit specifically is a pre-production model. I've had this for about a month now, but today, the day that we're launching this video, is the official day that this product is being announced. I've been able to play with this product for a while now. Let's dive in and check it out. So what is the Loop Deck CT? Basically, it's a new type of input device for your computer. Maybe you're familiar with the MacBook Pro and the touch bar along the top of the keyboard. The basic premise is that in each different application that you might be using on a computer, the touch bar can change, giving you different button options. So that's basically what the Loop Deck CT is, but it's a lot more complicated because instead of just being a standard touch screen, it's got a touch screen, it's got buttons and knobs and colors. There's so much going on here and so much customization you can do as well. Now, I do wanna get this out of the way. The buttons and knobs on this thing feel fantastic. This feels so much nicer than previous Loop Decks. I remember the first Loop Deck compared to the second one, the Loop Deck Plus. That was a huge jump. This is a huge upgrade from the previous Loop Deck products that I've tested. This thing really feels high end. Now, when I first opened this up, I plugged it in with USB, I downloaded the Loop Deck software, and it just worked. This thing knows exactly which application I'm in at any given moment. I mean, check this out right now. I'm in the Loop Deck software. I can switch over to Chrome here, and all of the buttons change here. I can switch over to Lightroom here, and all of the buttons change again. But it goes even deeper than that, because you can have multiple workspaces for each stage of editing with multiple pages as well you can swipe to quickly move between these pages. This doesn't just know what application I'm in, it also knows which module I'm using or which screen I'm on within applications. Let me show you what I mean right here. Right now I'm in the library module in Lightroom. If I click on develop, notice it changes all of the buttons and what everything does on this. So basically all of the buttons on this are always going to be relevant to whatever you're looking at on the screen. Now the Loop Deck Plus that I reviewed before was basically made with Lightroom in mind, but the idea here is that because we have screens and touch screens, this can work for a range of different applications. I didn't install anything special, but it just works with Google Chrome. I mean, I, I open up the web browser and boom, this just comes right up. I can click close tab and it's going to close that tab. I can click find and it's going to bring up the find dialog. I can click print and it's going to print this page. So it's pretty wild that this works with software like Google Chrome, but of course this was made for more hardcore programs like Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere. It also works with Ableton if you're into music production. But let me quickly show you how this works. I'm going to start in Lightroom here and we'll move into Photoshop. So these are some images I took of New York from a helicopter. And the first thing that I always need to do is cull through the images. Now, I could cull through the images with the keyboard. I can also cull through the images with the Loop Deck CT itself. Right now, when I'm in this library module here, you'll see that I have an option for no rating, two stars, or three stars. And this is a touch screen as well, so I can rotate this and go through each of the images or I can touch this and what it's going to do is set my rating. And then in case you guys didn't know, if you turn on caps locks, when you rate an image, it will automatically move you to the next shot. This will work with the numbers on the keyboard or this loop deck as well. It makes culling your images a lot faster. So let's just say that I wanted to rate this three stars you can see it rates at three stars and moves right on to the next shot. All right, so now if I wanna sort these images, you'll see here there's a button for rating, two stars or greater, or three stars or greater. I'm going to click this. I think I rated one shot, three stars. This is the stereotypical shot of your feet hanging out of a helicopter over New York City. And what I can do now is I can start editing this image. So if I hit number two here, you can see what it does is it changes all the settings and it moves me into the develop module. So the first thing I'm probably gonna wanna do is change the temperature. And you can see I have temperature, tint, exposure here, contrast, highlights, and shadows down here. And these knobs spin. So if I wanna make it warmer, I can go this way. I could bump up the exposure right here. I could change the tint just a little bit. add a little bit of contrast, make it brighter there, and crush those shadows a little bit. If I wanted to crop, I can hit this crop button here, 
and then automatically, you can see here, it says right on this touch screen in the middle, rotate crop area sum. So I can turn this and it's automatically cropping the shot. And then as you can see right here, it says apply tool. There's also an enter button right here. So I could hit that and that's going to be my crop. So moving on here, we can hit the number three. That's going to bring up the next set of things that we might want to change. This is the HSL color panel here. You can see this. And so red here is going to be represented right here by the H. So this is hue in the red channel. S is saturation in the red channel and L is luminance in the red channel. And then if we wanna change the colors that we're affecting, you can see those along the bottom here. So I don't think there's much more editing that I need to do, but we can keep hitting these number buttons moving over, number four, number five. You can see this is a vignetting dialogue here. So if I wanted to add a vignette, I could. I don't think I need one. Now, if I move all the way over to number eight, you'll see a button for open in Photoshop. I can hit that button. It's going to automatically ship this image over to Photoshop for more editing. So in Photoshop, as you can see, the loop deck completely changes again. It's giving me the options now for all of the different tools that we would normally find on the left side of the screen. Now, I think the normal tools are probably a lot easier to click on with the mouse than they are with this, but this is what I'm really excited about. There are some tools that I can never find. They're always hidden beneath other things. And I'm trying to even figure out what those are right now. I like the idea of putting all of the obscure tools that are hidden beneath other tools on the loop deck so that I can find the standard tools right there very easily with my mouse. But if I'm looking for something that always takes me a second to find, I like the idea that it's always there right under my finger. Now, right now, this rotator knob is set to zoom in. So if I rotate this knob, you can see it zooms in. If I wanted to click down here to size tool, now what I can do is I can change the size of my brush and you can see that growing there. Now, don't forget that we also have these six rotator knobs on the upper left and right as well. And the size tool, feather tool and opacity tool are set to these knobs on the left. They're going to do the same thing that we were just doing with this larger rotator knob. And uh, we also have on the right side, the mode tool, the flow and the layer opacity. So if we had multiple layers, we could change the opacity of whatever layer we happen to be on at that moment. All right, I don't think I actually need to edit this shot. So let's go ahead into Premiere and let's see how the loop deck changes. In Adobe Premiere, once again, we have tons of different options. It's a pretty clean setup right here. I love the clock, the analog clock. This pops up depending on what program you happen to be in. If there's nothing to go there, they put the clock. I love it. I've also seen the time and the date show up. All of this stuff can be customized. Again, we'll quickly talk about that in a second. But basically, you have a really clean setup here that you can click on each one of these subfolders to open up a ton of different options. So if I click on editing here, you can see we've got all the different tools. It changes the video height, the audio height, zoom level trim. It's crazy. You can hit this little circular button here to go back. I can click on effects and you can see all the different effects that we have for Premiere as well. Now, as I said before, I think for a lot of this stuff, it's probably easier and faster just to use your keyboard and mouse like you've always done before. But where I think the loop deck really shines is with those obscure tools or features that you may rarely use and you've probably forgotten about. And then when you see it right here written out, you go, oh yeah, I can do that. Oh yeah, that feature's in Lightroom. I can just do it here rather than going over to Photoshop. Or what is that shortcut to export? Oh, it just says export right here. I can click that rather than going to file and down to export. But I do find the knobs to be much faster and more accurate than trying to find and move really small sliders with a mouse. Loop Deck didn't make this to replace your keyboard and mouse. They made it to supplement it. And I think if you put in the time to actually customize this to the way that you work, I think that's where the real time savings will come in. Let's go ahead and open up the Loop Deck software here. So this is the software where we can go in, we can click every button here and we can change every aspect about what the Loop Deck does in each individual application. Now, I haven't spent a ton of time customizing my Loop Deck. To be honest, I'm excited for this product to come out and for Loop Deck to start making tutorial videos because I'm sure there's a million things that I'm not even considering that I could do with this when it comes to all of the software I use on a daily basis to help speed things up. So I think the Loop Deck Plus, the last Loop Deck that I reviewed, 
was made with photographers in mind specifically, especially photographers who use Lightroom and you're culling and editing hundreds or thousands of pictures. But when I think about this, I don't think this is just made for photographers and I don't think it's made for every photographer. I think this is made for power users, kind of like me who enjoys learning all of the shortcuts and enjoys being able to figure out how to do things more quickly and loves tinkering and customizing things. It's also really small, so unlike the last one, you could actually travel with it. And if you're that person, you know who you are, and you probably already know this is the product for you.